Hi, um, I'm going to talk to you about accruals and the double entry um, double entry for accruals, which sometimes can be a bit complicated, um, although it is actually quite simple once you um, understand it. So assume you have a company or a business and you get your windows cleaned um, four times a year. Okay, so let's just keep it very simple. So the business comes, comes along, the company comes along and they clean your windows and they charge £100 each time they do it. So they came along in March, cleaned your windows for £100. So you put a debit in the window cleaning expense account, okay? For £100, you debited the window cleaning expense and you credited it back. You did the same thing in June and the same thing in September, okay? So let's assume this company has a year-end date of the 31st of December, okay? So the window cleaning company came along in December, they cleaned your windows for £100, but they didn't give you a docket or an invoice. They didn't receive any cash. They did the window cleaning and they said, we'll talk to you the new year. So you have a 31st of December year-end date. Your windows have been cleaned in that year and you need to show that in your expenses. If you didn't show it, your window cleaning expenses would be £300, which would understate really um, the true costs that you incurred that year. So we need to put in a £100 expense in December. Normally we would credit cash, but we haven't paid them. Or we would credit accounts payable, but we haven't received an invoice. So what we need to do is we need to debit window cleaning and credit an accrual for window cleaning. And then we can close off the accounts in the normal way. So the window cleaning expenses for the year were £400 and £400 goes to the income statement as the window cleaning expenses, which is an accurate reflection of the costs incurred that year, irrespective of whether they were paid or not in the case of December. So on the 1st of January in the new year, if you open with an accrual, um, a credit accrual of £100, which is a current liability, it's the same as having a uh, a creditor um, payment um, due of 100, 100 pounds. But because this is an accrual, what you can do and what you do in the, at the start of the year is you actually zero that out. So you debit the accrual to bring it back to zero and you credit the relevant account, which is in this case the year two window cleaning expense account. So we have a credit expense, okay? Which is, an, which is the opposite side. Normally expenses are a debit, so this is actually going to reduce our expenses. So now we have a credit expense of 100. So the company that cleaned the windows, they come along and they say, here's the, uh, here's the bill that we should have given you last year. So you debit window cleaning and you can credit bank as normal. So that's the money going out. And that payment was then in relation to work for the previous year. So the balance of that account is actually zero now because both of those cancel each other out. So what happens is during the year, if you get your windows cleaned four times as a normal in March, June, September, December, so let's just go March, June, September, December. So during the year, if you get your windows cleaned those four times as normal, at the end of the year, You have debits of 500, but you have this accrual offsetting of 100. So again, you only have a 400 pounds to the income statement. So the cost in the, in the profit and loss account will be 400 pounds and 400 pounds, which is an accurate reflection of the costs that were actually incurred by the business. And it was the accrual it was putting this money into the accrual and then using it to offset these amounts that actually helped to keep this in balance. If we didn't do that, if we didn't do that accrual, this would have been 300 and this would have been 500. And that would have been a misstatement of the actual true costs that were incurred during the year. So I hope that's um, a useful example for you. Thank you.